Welcome, Caner Universe, to the 2021 edition. We are getting ready to rock and roll before we jump into today's segment, which has everything to work. We're calling this one Three Strikes You're Out on how to make modifications to common strikes. You still, now in 2021, need to avail yourself of the free reef source, which is that Kane Clarity Call. So really quick, two things before you and I both forget. Hit the subscribe button. If you're new to this and you're just seeing this for the first time, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss any future content. And also text the letters CCC, which stands for Kane Clarity Call, to 305-745-7839 so that we can have, we can listen to you and give you an actual plan so that you can attain your caning goals in 2021. We will show you how to make that happen. Three strikes are out. We're gonna take today three common strikes. You may be aware of them, maybe you're brand new to the culture and how we do things, and you're seeing this for the first time. This is great so that you don't pick up any bad habits. Uh, some of what comes across my desk and others point out and have questions about, so we wanna bring clarity uh, to those topics. Uh, the first one is the whole idea of striking with the two hands, we do like going from here to here as a prep. So this at a distance where they can't just reach, but coming from here to here, especially with something like this, the American Cane Boxing 32, which is designed for close quarter combat, uh, legal to carry, I can walk around with it because the tip is uh, making contact with the floor. I don't have to bend my uh, posture and I can strike out from here. But this whole idea of taking the cane and coming towards the midline, you may have heard me at other times uh, comment about that and why that's not a good idea. And I'll elaborate here and I'll show you how you can modify this to make it effective. Let me show you what the first problem with this is. And here's a fellow who is younger, stronger, faster. Just assume that that's always going to be the case and, and, and just treat it that way. But to think that just because we're having an altercation, we're, we're, and I could just come to that midline, look at his reaction. This is not a bag. This is not a dummy. I don't care what anybody says. This is not a dummy. <laughs> it's my guy. Um, and, and, and we got to have fun. You got to have fun when you're doing this. So, but you're coming towards the midline here. It, it, that's one of the things that can happen. And I don't like strikes, initial strikes, where he can see it in his 10 and 2 field of vision. This is too obvious. It's coming towards the midline. And it, it, it doesn't matter how good you get at this. He's a very capable guy at stopping. And then look at this. And then coming over with it or just two hands and just get it out of, out of the Look at this. Look at this, right down there. Careful with that, careful with that. I like it as a secondary move when the limbs are no longer, because that's what he's gonna do damage with, or with the limbs, right? Even if, and if you're drawing a, a weapon as well, you always hear me say, if you knock this down, I win every single time because this is no longer any good. So if I went from here to here, after the initial straw, after the initial movement, here, ooh, to come in quick, and I come in in such a way that he cannot see it. And it's still an impact tool, which means it seeks, say it all together, bone. And when you don't treat this as such and you treat this as if it were heating flesh, I don't want that. I don't want to hit him in the abdomen when he's jacked up on adrenaline. He can actually, I got individuals that can flex and they can take shots in there even when you hit them really hard. They're still getting through. So what you're doing is you're hitting in areas that are closer to the diaphragm, which is a little mushroom-like muscle here, that when it spasms, it makes it very difficult to breathe as your initial shot, if anything. So if you're gonna use these two hands, it's here, so that then you can come back. With something like the 32, you're using the horn. You hit with the horn, you hook with the crook, so that you don't forget it. If you make, if you just, with a, a slight wrist flexion on something like this on my secondary strike, you're essentially hitting, it's like hitting with brass knuckles now if you're using 
that personal protection extension. So let's get away from initial midline strikes with this, treating it as if it were uh, targeting flesh. And let's, let's have respect, let's understand, have the understanding of what the tool is. It's an impact tool. So that would be the first one on a two-handed strike. Strike number two, people, you, well, it's a great tool because it has all the, so I just come in and do this. The first thing that happens is you, you see that in a situation like this, I actually ran into because you're opening up so much. But even more importantly, treating him again as a functional, faster, younger guy, that when you do this, he can see that. Look at the, and, and of course, he's got a set of skills, and I don't know that the average guy on the street is gonna go ahead and anchor like he did, but he'll put his hand up. Uh, he'll go ahead and knock that down. He, the, the point is he can see the wide shots coming, so just looking to swing this, um, it's very different than doing a tight windshield wiper. I'd like you to have always follow-ups, always follow-up. And so to that end, let's focus, let's come from this angle here. Let's focus on those limbs again and let's take shots rather than opening up. You need to have respect for your guard zone in your guard zone, an imaginary rectangle that goes right here. This is your, these are your zones and your midline. So you don't wanna open yourself outside of there because it's the equivalent of telegraphing the shot. You don't want that. You want everything nice and tight and multiple shots where when that comes down, you can go ahead and strike the attacking limb, whether he's coming to grab, whether whatever, whatever the case may be. And then on this side, on ACSD, we do focus on the footwork. We focus on the footwork, and if you would just tilt this camera down for me a little bit, hold, 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 hold for a second. Um, with the cane, when you're looking around at what everybody's doing, you're gonna. Everybody knows how to walk forward and back, side to side, and that's the extent of it, right? ACSD is what introduces this, where you're uh, you're stepping off to the side, more of the circular motion. Think of boxers back in the day, right? From the time of gentlemen, right, Jim and John L. Sullivan, you know, this kind of thing, just forward and back, uh, versus Muhammad Ali and that, right? The, the footwork is now different, why? Because one shot may not be enough. We hope that it is. But if I hit you one time, I'm gonna hit you a bunch of times because my footwork allows me to move in and out of trouble, right, I always say. And so rather than coming out here, we're gonna keep our shots tighter in the guard zone. The third type of strike, that we want to get away from is the whole idea, and we'll do this one from here and then use the, the bag as the backdrop, is the whole idea that of a two-handed shot, I can just come in as a first shot and surprise this guy. This is again coming to his midline. I'm coming out here, he does that all day. I don't know where this originated from or why you think that as a first shot, it's okay to go from here and sidestep and do this. Um, and this is a 32, imagine, imagine a, a standard 36, right? So is there a time to do this? The answer is yes, but again, it's going to be in the secondary response and not leading from the onset. And so if I work hot here, uh, uh, again, now, um, if I do pin the hands because I have the concern for the secondary draw where he's gonna draw a weapon, that's different. I struck here, I start loosening this up. Here I'm striking down to the shins. When I come in, check this out. It's not even good enough to pin and go from here. I'm telling you that it's not. Because he feels here, he can tolerate that pain. Remember, he's jacked up on adrenaline as well. This is not enough. And I'm pressing here. Now, when I go to strike, he can let go here. It's loose and then he stops it again. This is where the detail comes in. And I'm gonna show you, this is an example of the kind of detail that you get when you have a foundation and, and, and a way of doing it step by step. Look at the cane, look at the shaft. This motion on the radial aspect of that grasp, watch what happens when I do that. That's different, folks. Get your hands out of there, Kiko. Get, uh, uh, uh. Tap if you feel this, I'm gonna go very light. Oh, he's feeling it already. Now, you can go ahead and strike and create. Right, either right on the bridge of the nose, if you've ever gotten hit there, you know what that's like, the watery eyes, the bloody nose, all that. Um, but if he turns his face, now you have a temporal shot and, and the midline starts opening up for you so that you can create that space and get out of there. Always with loud verbals, right? Back off, no, get away. Tell him what you want to do. 
assertive verbals, right? If he's a criminal and he hears, down, 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 get away, well, that sounds a lot like law enforcement, <laughs> right? Maybe his nervous system says, well, I've, I've been in trouble before. I know what that's like. All that plays an important role and is often neglected when it comes to self-defense. So those are three strikes, ways that you can modify them. You're going to see them out there. Now in 2021, you're going to see more instructors uh, coming out of anywhere, uh, uh, sharing information. You're going to hear this, but you want to make sure that you choose wisely, lay a good foundation uh, for yourself so that you're not wasting time, again, with missionless training. So how do you do this? I invited you to do it. Um, still in, in 2021, we are doing this because it is so important that you connect from the onset and you get with the authentic, original uh, systems that have been tried. Uh, instructors, we have invited, I have personally invited you many times to go ahead and do likewise. We love the fact that you're serving out there. We love the fact that you mean well. We love your consistency in putting out messages. Let's align with a curriculum that's going to allow you to serve your audience best. And that goes for you as well. CCC, simple text, 305-745-7839. This is the first of 2021. Thank you for being here with us. We look for nothing but the very best, and we pledge to support you, guide you, and give you the accountability if you so choose to pick up this tool and walk the way of being empowered. So, Joe Robina for American Cane Self-Defense. Thanks for watching. Keep caning. Stay safe.